Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous good looking friends. Today I have something really special for you that I don't think anybody has heard yet. For those that have read the book Revenge by Tom Bauer, there was a gentleman by the name of John Fitzpatrick that was mentioned in the book. John Fitzpatrick has been somewhat of a mystery about Meghan Markle's connections, and this podcast actually does shed some light on when John Fitzpatrick met Meghan Markle and his experience with Meghan. I'm going to let you listen to it and form your own opinion because I have my own opinions, but but don't want to share just yet because I really would like to allow you to form your own opinion without influence or opinion from me. So about two years ago, John Fitzpatrick sat down with Charlie Bird and did a session for the Senior Times podcast. In this podcast, he talks about his hotel business as well as being in New York and his experience with 9-11, but he also does discuss his interaction with Meghan Markle. I will go ahead and put the link below to this podcast. It's definitely worth a listen. You get to know the guy a little bit. He does sound very genuine and friendly and down to earth, but his take on Meghan is quite interesting. Here is the excerpt of that conversation. You were at Meghan Markle's uh, wedding with yes. Prince Harry. <laughs> that goes back. I'm trying to think how what happened. You know, this is this beautiful, something about our hotel business. I was sitting in the bar one day. Rory McIlroy was there. He was playing a golf competition and Pori Carrington, they were playing upstate somewhere. But they had a few days off and I see Rory in the corner with a baseball hat down and then and somebody with him but they didn't see who was with him so I'll go over to say hello to him and who was he sitting beside this was before he got married now too so I want to be very clear it was Meghan Meghan Markle and I was a huge fan of suits I love suits before and now to this day I'm very friendly with Sarah who's Donna and she actually was in Ireland last year and um so we got talking and I figured it out how he got to know her was he only had met her that day too because the ice book challenge was on and he was sitting there on Facebook or whatever and she was in whatever way they were connected and he challenged her and he realized that she happened to be 100 yards from the hotel. Her best friend lives on 57 between Lex and 3rd. So he went over to her place and they met them and they did the ice book challenge. He brought her back for a drink. Well, that night I'm going down to, Sopra- uh, to Cipriani's downtown with some friends and I said come on will you go down and fair deal Rory was coming and Sean Flaherty his top guy and um, I said come on uh, Megan you want to come and she said oh I said Megan come on we're all going for a bit of fun we all came had a bit of crack and a few my, my, my best friend David Doyle's daughter Ashley Doyle over with her friends so we also had about 20 and one thing I loved about Megan was the first time was she came a little bit later but she went around the room to every one of those other girls who were sitting at the table, to the young girls who just were mad. But she never had any sense of status or that's, you know what I mean? She was brilliant. So we had a great fun. So that's how I got to know her. Then she got invited to speak in Trinity College. So when she was here, I took her for dinner. And then her, she was kind of seeing some, but it wasn't. I think it was off then at this. She was dating some celebrity chef. So... I took the opportunity to invite her to the White House one March. And uh, uh, it was, and she said, I'd love to go. You weren't dating her. <laughs> no, I was not dating Sorry, her. I'm and joking. officially, I was not dating her. <laughs> and I want that to be very clear now that Prince Harry is involved. I definitely was not dating her. But no, we were just best friends. I so we were say but she was a great character. And what we did was, um, I said, I remember ringing her. I said, Listen, I'm going to the White House, do you want to come? And she, it was amazing, of course, she is now. And I'll tell you that story in a minute. But it was a big deal for her. And I said, hold on, we're only going to the White House. It's a reception. I'm not sitting with the president. I mean, we're, yeah. There's 200 other Irish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're all there. <laughs> but we're going to have fun. And she said, I'd love it. Well, I swear, we went down and we had the best time. And even after the White House, I got her to meet... Um, and there was Taoiseach. And um, she got to meet her. And, and would you believe she was lucky enough. We were in the right position that Obama came over because I'd met Obama a couple of times. And I introduced her to Obama. And she was over the moon. And I'm going, you know, this is a movie star. But you think of it, you know, she'd never been there. So we had a great time. Even at the end, we always used to go to the ambassadors or residents. But there was always an hour or two gap. So I'd go back to the Willard 
and I'd always host a reception. And I didn't realise I had, in my suite, I had more than I thought I would have. About nearly 30 showed up. And I remember turning around to Megan and saying, Megan, I don't have enough staff here, so you're going to have to help me serve the coffee and the tea and make it. I'm doing it myself. And no problem. And here she was serving Loretta Brennan Glucksman. <laughs> the you master. serious? Oh, she, Megan Markle was doing the was serving. She was brilliant. She was, just, we all, the two of us, I said, you got to help me. She got behind the bar and everything. She's brilliant. She is, you know, she's, she gets a tough time, but she's absolutely, so anyway, then what happened was, she did, she came back to Ireland and, um, and we just became very close friends. And then I got to know Sarah Donna and uh, did, and then out of the blue, we just stayed very close and um, she came to, sorry, she came to New York. We'd go for dinner and whatever it is and her friend lived across the road. We'd go up to um, Bill Bouquet. But she was just very normal. And then when she started, they, we'd be emailing each other and all sorts of stuff and we'd stay in touch. And I never forget it. I saw her with Prince Harry and I said to her, and then she started coming off Instagram. She started coming off all her... I said, so I go to her and I said, oh, something's happening here. And then, so we were able... So anyway, she got engaged and um, she then she got married and she invited me and it was an amazing wedding because um, it was just so different. You know, the wedding was different. So, and I'd never been to a royal wedding. So, But then at this stage, I'd known um, Donna thing from Suits and we all stayed in a hotel. They kind of blocked off a hotel where... They came over and picked us up. And um, so I hung out with the whole cast of Suits the weekend. It wasn't just the wedding, it yeah, was yeah. the whole weekend. But then finally she became, when she married Prince Anne, this is what I love about Meghan, because she, you know, she married Harry and we stayed in touch. And I was going to London one weekend. I said, you know what, I'll just chance it now and see. So, hey, Meghan, um, I'm coming into London next weekend. I'm sure you're free for coffee. Joking. Oh, she says, she comes back and she says, yeah, drop up to Kensington. And I went up and I had sat with her and we had, uh, it was amazing though to see, you know, the difference because I arrived and you've got to go through all this protocol and everything else and you go into the room and you're sitting in a big room and you're waiting and this guy and his full footman and his full red outfit and his white gloves. And, uh, but they stand there and they said, we'll go and get the Duchess for you. And she has probably now a bit formal and I say, Duchess, how are you? And she was brilliant. She turned and said, John, it's Megan. It was Megan at the beginning and it's Megan now. And within two minutes, she sat down opposite me. But it was so funny. Then they all left and they said, are you okay, Duchess? She said, yes. And she leaves, they leave the room. And she jumps them easily from the couch, then sitting over to where you are behind and just totally relaxed, totally different. Says, how are you? What's going on? How's Rory? How's Erica? And she knows it was Rory's wife. And she said, and I said, well, how long have we got? She says, she looked at her watch, she said, we've got exactly 29 minutes and they will be back in for me. It was just sad to her. So I, and it was tough, you know, and we just talked normally then. And it was just, it, it, it's just uh, that type of life, it's different. And they, once she came back, the former look came back on again. And she said, thank you, John, and we'll see you again. And it was, you know, it's tough. It's a remarkable story. And so we're coming to the end. So John Fitzpatrick has done a lot of work for the Irish community. And he is well known in New York City as being a philanthropist, giving back to the community. He's also played a very important part with the peace deal with Ireland, the one that Bill Clinton had negotiated. What do you guys think after hearing that? Do you think that he was being genuine? Do you think that he was stumbling with his words? Or do you think that is really not much to think about? Leave your thoughts below. I'm interested in seeing what you think. Anyhow, I will be back soon with more content, but until then, please be safe, and I will talk to you later. Bye! You're such a broad! <laughs>